Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Business 2.0. Today, we have a very special guest, and I do mean that very special. Uh, this gentleman is uh, has been prolific in the hip hop scene for a while, and we never, we're just talking off air how we never got a chance to really rotate together, but now we're here together, and we're going to find out this brother's history, introducing Patience Picasso, y'all. Check it out. Salute, bro. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for making the time, man. I really appreciate it. You know, and I reached out and I was really pleased to know that, you know, you can make time for me, man, and, and appear on the show. Because really, yeah, because I want to know your story. And like, I know there's listeners and viewers that want to know more as well. I mean, they probably heard the music by now, but, you know, I want to get into that. So I want to get jump right in, man. I did a little research and it was your first project, Zoom A? Yes, sir. Okay, can you want to talk about the creative process? Well, your beginnings, and then maybe we'll get into the creative process of that. So what was your beginnings? You're from the Shy, though, originally, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm originally from Chicago. Okay. Um, my, my mom and my step-pops moved me to the zoo. Okay. Um, I moved to the zoo. Um, to be honest, writing music was never something that I was ever really focused on. Mm -hmm. um, I was more like into dancing and, you know, doing the little routines and yeah. shit. Like I grew up on mm -hmm. audition and Bobby Brown and shit. You know what I'm saying? I used to go to the little talent shows and stuff and, sure. you know, try to do the little routines and stuff. So I'm um, not familiar. I don't know if you're familiar with, are you familiar with Art Payne, Oma Wally Payne? I know. Uh, yeah. Art. Yeah. That's my man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Art Trip. So, Trip. Yeah, all okay. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, so my beginnings in hip hop, and I'm glad you brought up Trip. Mm -hmm. Um, started with um, collaborating with them. Okay. Um, I remember watching uh, Trip. Uh, you, you, you familiar with MC Chief? Then, right? Yeah, I know Chief Southside. Yeah. Okay. No Chief. Okay. So, so wow, that's so, way back. <laughs> that's way back, though. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That it, it goes way back. Yeah. Um, when, when, when I was still doing the routines and stuff, you know, Trip and and Chief and uh, King Crush, King Crush, uh, yeah. King Crush, certain you know people like that, they had got a little bit more off into doing the, the hip hop stuff. You know what I'm saying? They was actually rapping and stuff at the talent shows when we were still just dancing and lip syncing. Yeah. Um, I I, I wanted up doing a couple routines with um with Art and mm -hmm. um. We was kind of falling short in the um in the talent shows, if I'm being honest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And one time he kind of came to me and was like, man, we're gonna have to do something different. We're gonna have to do something different than just you know sitting up here and lip syncing and doing routines and stuff. You know what I'm saying, man? We should try to write. And I'm like, shit, nigga, I don't know how to write no raps, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so um he, he actually, you know, I'm gonna just keep it 100 throughout all this. He is actually the person who um had me to pick up the pen. Mm. We never know what's in you until somebody gets that motivation right. going with it. So, you know what I'm saying? So mm. um he he had me pick up the pen. Um I started writing a little bit. You know, we did a little couple talent shows, mm. um rapping, and I had a couple people kind of start pulling me aside like, yo man, you 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 kind of dope, which mm -hmm. at that time I didn't think I was. You know what I'm saying? Even now, looking back, I look at some of my old stuff and I'm like, man, come on, dog. Really? Yeah. Um, same here, man. <laughs> same. Yeah, but that's, that, <laughs> that's keeping it 100. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like, like, I'm like, I don't know. Um, yeah. So um, I did a couple shows with Art. Me and Art kind of, you know, fizzled out or whatever. And me and Trip, me and Trip used to go to summer school together. Okay. Me and Trip with... Uh, Ride together, you know what I'm saying? The summer school here, come and pick me up from my mom's house. You know what I'm saying? We kind of be rapping a little bit. Trip mm -hmm. had wound up getting into this group uh, called Zoo Niggas. Zoo Niggas, okay, yeah, okay. He was, was in phase three at first. Him mm -hmm. and Art was doing the whole phase three phase mm -hmm. three thing, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to where it really started was, mm -hmm. you know, Trip and uh, this cat named Marseille and, and this cat Larry Benjamin. Mm -hmm. um, I know, man. Zoo niggas. Yep, yep. And, yeah, zoo niggas was kind of the start of where it really started, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Um they did an album, they was doing an album. Um, they went to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I was cool with the cat Marseille, and mm -hmm. they invited me to go down to Atlanta too. Okay. I went down to Atlanta 
and I was fortunate enough to record a song with MC Bree. Yeah, yeah. So we all did a song with MC Bree called Rolling With My Zoo Niggas. Mm, okay. Um, it was a bunch of cats in the studio. I went in there. I'm like, oh, yeah, dog, you know, Bree had just did the Ain't No Future in Your Front and yeah. I got to get my eyes with pocket shit. So I'm like, damn, we in here with a real motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. And I went in there and dropped my verse. And when I came out from dropping my verse, came out the booth. Uh, Al Darren, shout out to Al Darren. You know what I'm saying? He's the pers first person that had faith in me, the first person that put money behind me, the first person that, you know, I would I would not be where I'm at without him. Okay. Um, shout out, But man. Al came out the studio, out the booth, and Al was like, yo, man, when we done working on the Zoo Niggas album, dog, we, we you next up. We gonna mm. work on your album. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? I guess within that verse, I had impressed him enough to make him feel like, you know what I'm saying? He could put some money behind me. So yeah. um, not two, three months later, maybe, yeah, maybe two or three months later, he wanted up flying me down to Atlanta. I went down to Atlanta and I stayed with this cat, Swift C, mm -hmm. um, who is actually the DJ for 112 right now. Oh, um, okay. And he's like best friends with Hurricane, mm -hmm. which is uh DMC brother. He was the yeah. DJ for, for the Beastie Boys. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. So, right. So he's, you know, he flies me down to Atlanta. Um I can I maybe 19, 20 years old at the time. Um and I stayed with Swift and them for like two months mm -hmm. and worked on the Zume album. Okay. That you brought up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of where it all started. You know what I'm saying? I got down there. I was able to um, meet a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. um, I was going into a lot of different studios. I, I recorded some of my songs in Kurt Time studio, which is Curtis Mayfield studio. Okay. Um, I was recording in a studio um, down there uh, called Transmedia. Okay. Um, uh, Outcast. And a lot of other different artists who was coming up at that time was recording that. And that just kind of, that kind of jump started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Trip, me and Trip remained cool throughout stuff. You know what I'm saying? Trip was real cool with Bree. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was fortunate enough that I was cool with Trip, where Trip would just call me like, hey, what's up, man? We finna ride by Bree crib. Mm -hmm. You know, try, and we could just roll up on Bree crib, and he was real good people's man. We'd be at his crib, be a bunch of young cats down there that was just hungry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Doing music, it was different DJs. I mean, different producers like Jazzy Faye. Way before anybody knew who Jazzy Faye was, you know what I'm saying? Jazzy Faye was staying with Bree. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And Bree basement producing records. We was rapping over his music and stuff. Never knew he would be that's who crazy. he was. But man, it impacted. Crazy. Different things, bro. Yeah, man, that's crazy. And you talk about early '90s at Atlanta. That's when it, the scene was bubbling. That's when the shit was just taking off, right? So right, right. Down there, it, it, talk about the right place at the right time. I knew a little bit of the backstory about how they went down there. They were, uh, I think, they did a video with Breed too, right? Wasn't it uh, appeared in a video or, or something like that? Um, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think. Um, see, it was a bunch of, and we just gonna keep it 100 throughout this interview. Yeah. It was a bunch of politics and shit going on mm -hmm. when it came to that whole shit because Zoom niggas was a group within they self. Mm -hmm. And I was a solo artist, but Bum Rush Records, who was actually the first company that signed me, which Bum Rush Records, which a lot of people don't know, was distributed by Solar Music Group. Okay, all right. A very big company, you know what I'm saying? Right. And they 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 were gonna put out Zoo Niggas and they was gonna put out G Smooth. Okay, which was my name then. It wasn't Patience, it was G Smooth. Right. So um it was some stuff going on within the Zoo Niggas contract that I didn't know about, you know what I'm saying? That I you know I would go to meetings with them, mm -hmm. but I would have to sit outside the room while they had their meetings. So I never really knew the insides of what was going on. Yeah. But they didn't want to sign their contracts. It was almost kind of like some NWA shit, if you're being, mm -hmm. honest, if I'm being honest. They didn't, they were smarter than me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they they didn't want to sign their contracts. So when they didn't want to sign their contracts, Bum Rush Records kind of came at me like, 
well, shit, we, we'll give you this, we'll give you that. We're going to put you out. I was hungry at the time. I had just had my first, my second child at that mm-hmm. time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's kind of like hungry, like shit, I signed. Right. Fuck it. You know and I just went on here and did, and, and that kind of caused some friction between me and Zoo niggas because they felt at that time I was supposed to have like held out and not signed, but I didn't right. know what, right. what was going on because nobody was keeping me in tune. Mm-hmm. What, what was really going on? You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it caused some friction between us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Us as a unit, right? And so let me ask you this real quick. I just want to butt in real quick. So did y'all have management? Did y'all have management at the time? Was Bree was Bree walking y'all into these situations or what is? Because Bree was with, with Itchy Bond at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Itchy Bond, Bree was, right? So Bree was that. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Your story. Um, Bree wasn't really. I wouldn't say he was walking us into these situations. Um, all I really knew, me personally, was the conversations I was having with Bum Rush Records. Mm. Um, and when you talk about management, Al Daring, mm. you know, founder of Bum Rush Records, he was kind of my management and he was my record company. Okay. Um, where I kind of got, and no disrespect to Al, we was all young. Mm-hmm. Um, but where I got kind of screwed in the whole thing was Al also paid for my attorney, oh, which yeah. is actually a conflict of interest. It is. You see what I'm is. saying? You can't have the same attorney. You right. know what I'm saying? So when certain things went on with the contracts and shit that wasn't right, mm-hmm. it, 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 it was just messed up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you, gotta, just, you know, now you got to keep that shit. You got to keep that shit separate. You know that now, right? I know that now, but I didn't know that then. You know what I'm saying? I can remember Al driving me out to Detroit or whatever, and I met with this lady, and mm. she was supposed to be my attorney and all this shit. And mm. when shit came back to where, you know, money wasn't right and shit wasn't right, mm. and I tried to reach out to her, she was kind of blowing me off. Like, dude, like, right. that's a conflict of interest. Like, you, I'm not your attorney, like, mm. but I hired you as an attorney, but right. he had hired her as my attorney. And it just, it yeah. just, it was a situation, man. It was a learning experience. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I don't have any regrets or anything when it comes to that, but um, yeah, man, that, that was, I was, man, you brought back, you know, when they get those young artists, like, like you said, they, they know they put us in a trick bag a lot of times. I had a similar situation, man, back in belonging to groups and shit like that. And they, it's conquer the conquer and divide a lot of times, right? It's what they try to do. So right. and, and not knowing any better, we just think we're gonna get on. And back then, obviously, you know, we're, we're young, impressionable men, and they making that shit look fly, and we're gonna sign, you know. And that's the, the, the machinery of the business hadn't changed, but we just smart enough, you know what I mean? So but right. okay, Absolutely. so so from that point, what what year was this when you dropped dropped the, the zoom A? What year was that? Uh, 94, maybe. Okay. Okay. Might've been 94. Okay. Um, I shot a video here, mm-hmm. uh, in Kalamazoo down at Lacrone Park. Okay. Um, shot a video for what would be, um, the first single off of that album, which mm-hmm. was, uh, uh, what you want to do. Right. Um, everybody came out. It was at Lacrone Park. The whole street was packed like Crenshaw. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The boys in the hood type shit, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was it was it was a it was a really good time, man. Um and um not a whole lot. No, I shouldn't say not a whole lot. I mean the video came out. Mm-hmm. Um I got a feature and write on magazine. Mm-hmm. I was out in Cali kicking it with people that you know what I'm saying at that time I never knew who those people were, you know what I'm saying? I was sitting in uh, Solar Music Group Studios with E-40 back mm. then, but I didn't know who that was. You know right. what I'm saying? I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? It was so long ago that mm. you look back now and I'm like, man, I was around a lot of people that I didn't really embrace it the way that I, I feel like I should have. Yeah, um, yeah. Being around Swift um, and this other guy who he was in the group with, uh, Big L and they had a group sniper unit. Mm-hmm. Um, 
they knew a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, in Atlanta. When I was down there with them in Atlanta recording that album, man, I mean, I, they took me to the Lollapalooza. Mm. I mean, I was on a tour bus kicking it with the Beastie Boys, you know what I'm saying, George Clinton. I just met so many different people. And I look back now, it's nothing like now. Right. I don't have pictures and I don't have pictures and stuff to show my kids and stuff. I tell my kids I was on the right in the right on magazine. They'd be laughing at me and shit now because I was never good about keeping that shit. Yeah, I can't yeah. even pull the magazine on. They're like, yeah, right, man. Yeah. No, for real, dog. This is real. At the time, man, we I I, I think almost like at the time we kind of think that shit is gonna last forever. I don't know, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I've always felt like when I got some shine, I was just like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Newspaper clipping, magazine, whatever. Yeah, that's cool, but you know, I don't think this. I, it's so much is going on back then, you know. But that was a great time for the music, man. I, I think about ninety four, ninety five. That was a feel. That whole era right there just felt good, man. We just had some feel good music, and, and um, you know, now that you you bring up some stuff, I do remember some moves y'all was making. You know what I'm saying? And I always wondered, like, okay, y'all was fully connected with some heavy hitters, man. And it just kind of just dissipated, right? After a while, we didn't, yeah. I didn't hear too much about it. So yeah. that's why I said, did you hear the backstory? I mean, this shit is, is wild, man. It's wild, you know? Yeah, I mean, it 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 is. Um we we the 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 backstory on that is um, you know, after a while, Bum Rush was no longer involved. Mm. Um and zoo niggas decided to. And when I say zoo niggas, I'm gonna say them three: mm. you know, Trip, Bear, and Say. Mm -hmm. um, they they wanted up hooking up with Too Short. Yeah, uh, Too Short. I do remember that that too. I do remember. Yep, that. yep, yep. Yeah. Too Short down there. Um, started a label, mm -hmm. and he he put out an album called Nation Riders. Mm -hmm. And um, I was invited to go at that time. At that time, you know, I was just kind of always um, to myself a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit more of an introvert, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, they had wanted me to go down there or whatever, you know, and I didn't wind up going. And they winded up actually signing with two short records. Okay. Zoo niggas. Right. Um, and... They had, they had some opportunities open up for them. You know what I'm saying? They met a lot of different people and stuff. Um, I, if I'm not sure, I think Too Short gave them some money, you know what I'm saying, some cash advancements and stuff. And I mean, it was it was good, you know what I'm saying? It was good for the zoo to see some people from the zoo get down there and actually do something. Right. That, just like anything else you say, never really heard anything else after no. um, the... Uh, after the whole deal was finalized. Right, so they um, never dropped. They never, nothing ever, they never dropped anything or, or nothing like well, that? Nah, he, well, Too Short, Too Short did drop an album, the mm -hmm. the Nation Riders album. You could probably pull it up. It was it was a few artists on there. I think Too Short even give a shout out to Kalamazoo okay. on the album. Um, but shortly after that, um, I moved to Atlanta. Okay. When I moved to Atlanta, we took the zoo niggas name because that was always them three. And we incorporated me into the group and mm. we changed it to animal house. Okay. And we started a group called animal house, which was the four of us. Um, we did a couple of things with the animal house. We put out a CD. We still down there. That's, that's when I would say me at least was dealing with breed more heavy. When mm -hmm. Bree was being, you know, he was being more of an influential thing. Cause do you remember the whistle stop? Yeah, yeah, I remember the little club down, the, down, yeah. uh, downtown. The whistle yeah, stop was like the old train station. Yeah, by the tracks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We threw, we threw it. We we did a zoo nigga out. I mean, a Animal House album, and um, we threw a release party. Mm -hmm. And we threw the release party down there. Bree actually came down here and did the release party with us too. Okay, that's dope. So, yeah, that was dope. You know what I'm saying? It was dope. A lot of people came out. A lot of people showed support. But um, the Animal House thing didn't last long either. Um, after a while of being in Atlanta, just, I mean, you know if you've ever been in a group. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? To anybody, you know, I'm not trying to distract anybody from being in a group because if you can make it work, you know what I'm saying? Um 
all props to you. Okay. But a lot of times, at least in my experiences, um, I would never deal with any type of group situations anymore. There's just too many different personalities and yeah. egos and shit. Oh, bro. You know what I'm saying that it just fuck everything up when it don't even have to be. Yeah. Um, so Animal House, Animal House as a group had a lot of opportunities on the table, mm -hmm. um, deals on the table, but personal issues prevented that from happening. Mm -hmm. um, and when those personal issues prevented things from happening, I didn't really know anybody in Atlanta except Animal House. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I spent maybe five years down in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Going out there doing shows, trying to, you know, market and do what we could do as a group. But once that shit kind of just fizzled out, that's what brought me back to the zoo. Okay. Okay. And I'm talking like 2001. No. Two, I think I came back here like 2003. Okay. Pretty okay. sure I moved back here. So I think I was down in, I think I was in Atlanta for like 99, 98, 99 to maybe 2003, early 2004. Okay. Okay. So it was just basically personalities, you know, it, it, and that, that makes me reminisce on a, I was in a, I don't know if you heard of Urban Nights. Uh, this is like I know, I know the Urban Nights guy. <laughs> now I know the history too, because I'm thinking, man, I didn't even know you was affiliated with that. But yeah, you know, yeah. I've done I've done a little research too, and I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah now, nah, okay, yeah. I get it. Urban Nights, that was my crew, man. And uh, you know, it was one of the things where I felt like we could have used a manager, a, st a, a like a stabilizing force, somebody to organize because everybody got we well, got six or seven people in a group or even less, you know, three or four, everybody got mm -hmm. different ideas. Everybody wants to go a different direction. And sometimes you just mm -hmm. need that stabilizing force to keep the, the, the car on the road, so to speak. And then from, um, from that experience, I dig, I dig what you're saying because after that, it just, it just totally soured me on being in any kind of groups. I was like, yep. and for years people had said, man, you need to go for self. You need to do dolo. You know, you need to do something on your own. And I was just always loyal to this unit, you know, and I, they're still my guys. We're still brothers, right? But uh, it just became it just became this thing where the group fractured and I figured, look, you know, this is my opportunity to take my wealth of knowledge and my, my musical, you know, skills or whatever and do my own thing and be my own mm -hmm. creative person and sink or swim on my own. So I, I definitely mm -hmm. feel you, man. It just solves you. It's, it's bad. It's too bad because y'all had like a lot of talent in that group. You know, and, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of talent in that yeah. group, man. And potential, and, you know, and you were down in. I was dare say, obviously, the South was just taking over. They had already took over the game back then. Yeah, Ludacris was was doing his thing. Ti was doing it in this early two thousand, whatever. You know that mm -hmm. area. So y'all was in a perfect spot for it. Um, but um, as you know, as fate would have it, you still are doing your thing here today. Um, like I said, I did some yes, research, sir. man, and I'm loving the. I'm loving your shit, man. And uh, I think I've expressed it, man. Yeah, I've expressed this to you before, man. So, you know, moving on from that, um, how did you, what about the name change? I wanted to ask about that. What prompted the name change from G Smooth to, to Patience Picasso? How'd you, how'd you make that transition? What made you do it? What was the thought, thought process behind it? So um, when I came back, when I moved back to the zoo, from Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, I had gave up. And you as an artist, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, well, maybe not, I shouldn't speak for other people. There's been several times throughout my career that I've wanted to quit. Yeah. That I've just been like, like I just, I've just woke up one morning and been like, man, you know what? Fuck this music shit, man. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna do this no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, what's the point? Like, I'm putting money into it. I'm not getting money out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to speak a message. They not getting it. Mm -hmm. You know, you turn on the TV It go back to like, uh, what always rings in my head is that Kanye line. Like, damn, these niggas that much better than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> she sit on TV and be like, what? <laughs> this is what? I yeah. can't do that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, can't, I'm I can't dumb it down yeah. to the point that they gonna understand what I'm saying. So why should I even keep doing it? Yeah. I think and every then, artist, just to pause you just for a second. Hey, bro. Yeah. Every artist that has some substance have thought like that before. Like I, 
the same, bro. I mean, like, you're, you're telling my story when you're saying this, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just like, they won't, they, when, when will it ring in their head? Like, you're talking about everyday shit, but every, they want to hear something, you know, they want to hear something else, right? You know right. And, right. We, you, you're talking about life like the next cat, but your, your shit is realism. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, and these other niggas out here doing the fantasy rap. And it's just like, like you said, man, it's like, what is the, like, you're doing it for the love, um, you know what I'm saying? And what what's the point, right? What, what's the point? Right. What's the right. point? And, and, and you and you can only dumb it down so much. And it, and then when you start to dumb it down, it affects the integrity of your music. You feel me? So. Exactly. And I've, have, you, have you ever had somebody, like, literally say that shit to you? Like, man, you should... You know, man, you kind of just talking over niggas' head, man. You should just dumb it down a little bit. That yeah. shit really is frustrating because it's like, what the fuck yeah. is you asking me to do? That's like asking a real motherfucker to not keep it real no more. You know what I'm saying, man? You know what, man? Can you fake it a little bit? No, I, no, absolutely, I cannot. <laughs> I can't. You know right. what I'm saying? That's exactly so what it is. I had to, um, I had to learn to be, um patient with other people mm. um i had to learn to be patient with myself mm. um and in life lessons through my experiences i think patience mm. is the biggest thing that i will ever have to overcome mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i still when i get up every morning and pray i still pray for patience because mm. i don't i haven't totally embrace that yet yeah. you know what i'm saying so when i got back here and i took that time off to not do music because it was a good two years that i didn't even do nothing mm. um i didn't write i didn't do anything mm. um and one day i just kind of woke up like man you know what it's it's not this this can't be the end you mm. know what i'm saying like i got I, you know it started kind of coming to me again you know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know, I need to change. You know what I'm saying? I need to step out of what used to be and step into what is to become. Yeah. And um, that's that's where I develop patience. You know what I'm saying? With hopes to one day develop patience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then it, I just felt like it was a dope name too. You know what I'm saying? Like it that's is a dope name. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, yeah something different you know what i'm saying outside of you know g smooth or you know what i'm saying whatever mm -hmm. but the main source of me changing that name was what i wanted to embrace in life more than anything else you yeah. know what i'm saying and I'm, i i feel like i have to a certain extent but i'm still working on it yeah it's yeah, it's a work in progress i'm i, I tend to be the same I tend to be one of those people like just like I need it right now. Yeah, me and, too. Uh, me too. Yeah, I need it right now, and I know that rubs some people the wrong way, but it is what that's just my personality. You know what I'm saying? And I've gotten, like you said, that's something to pray over, man, because I've gotten better at patience. But bro, that's not number. You can ask anybody who knows me. That's my number one Achilles heel. I need the shit right now. I like, and that's that's how I'm moving in my, in my brain. You know, I I, I want. I'm I'm not gonna never ask anybody to do something for me that I, I I'm not willing to go go the extra mile for. So like if I'm asking you to do something, then best believe I'm right there upholding my end, basically. So Absolutely. I understand that, man. That's a really dope, that's a really dope story on how you how how that name came about, man. Cause I always wonder how you make that transition. It's more descriptive than who you are. You feel me? So right. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I know you collaborated with quite a few people, man. Um you know, you collaborated with a couple guys that uh, uh, you know, I came up with Ed Jen and um, mm -hmm. you know, some some other cats, man. So, like, what what's your process when you go into a collab? Like, are you um, yeah, just tell me your writers, your 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 process in general when you're writing. Like, are you do you do you do? I know a lot of cats like to start with a, a blank slate. They come in to the lab and listen to music and then they write. Some cats want to start with the chorus. Some cats write a rhyme and build a course around it. What, what's your process? Um, for me personally, I just do a lot of writing in general. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I just, I have a lot of 
emotions and thoughts, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, going through my mind con continuously. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to doing um, collaborations, let's say, um, I might already have a bunch of ideas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a little easier now, too, because, you know, I used to have to write all this shit down. You know right. what I'm saying? In a notebook now. But now, you know, you got the little voice recorder on your phone. Yeah. So I might just be riding and some shit come to my head and I turn on the voice recorder and mm -hmm, say what I need to say. Mm. Um, as long as I got a... The hardest thing for me is like that first couple lines. Yeah. From there, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing. So when somebody asks me to do a collaboration, I might have to go back and just look at something that I started. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or something that um I already had in process you yeah. know what I'm saying is what I like to do for collaborations sometimes I could do some shit on the spot though too you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying some you know and it's kind of like okay well, what's the topic what we'll, we'll be yeah. talking about on this yeah. you know what I'm saying because a lot of people don't take that into consideration either you know right. people get on the song this is the chorus bro what you rapping about ain't got shit to do with the chorus what is you talking about the fuck right. is you you know what I'm saying <laughs> But me personally, I like to yeah. stay in sync with what we're talking about. Yeah. So um I generally like a little bit of time, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can actually do what I feel like I, I, I want to give a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? If you hit me up, it's like, gee, I want you on some shit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come in there half ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, all right, so you know, send me the beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I might hear the beat. What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. All right, I might, you know. I might be able to sit down at night. It really just depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I might be able to sit down at night, pin the whole shit that quick. Yeah. It might take me a while. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's a it's a it's a process for me when it comes to like projects and shit. It's mm -hmm. a huge gap between okay. my projects. So I've maybe put out, you know, like I had said, this this the writer's block. This the last mm -hmm. album I just did. Um, the album I did before this was. This virtue album mm -hmm. is probably a good seven years between the two. I need both um, of them. <laughs> right. I need both of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> so go ahead. right. Go ahead. Hey, appreciate it. And I'm not, I'm not good at you know putting out, you know, how these dudes and and and, and more props to them that they could do it, but putting out a bunch of mixed CDs, five, six mixed CDs a day, mm -hmm. I mean a year, and this mm -hmm. I can't do that. Personally, mm -hmm. I cannot do that. Um, shout out to Ed Jen. Mm -hmm. I can't write an album in my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ed don't really write shit down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I have to write some shit down, at least, at least the start of it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Write it down, yeah, kind of start to get it in my head, and then I could slowly add to it in my head without maybe writing the rest of it down, right? But there has to be like a certain basis of it, mm -hmm. yeah. I get that. That's the foundation. That, and, um, yeah, yeah. You need a foundation. Yeah, you need a foundation for it. That's interesting, man. Everybody, like everybody else, everybody has their own creative process. So it's interesting how that goes down. So what's the dates on that? The last one you dropped. When when did you drop that? What, what year was that? I dropped. I dropped Writer's Block in 2020. Oh, so that was just okay. last year. Okay. I just dropped that at the end of last year. I saw a couple um, of video clips off of it. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, couple. yep, yep. And I'm actually still in the process of um, shooting for that album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a song on there called Past Life um, that I've got a lot of good responses on. Um, I work with Keys. I don't know if you know Keys Burke, mm -hmm. YK Infinite Films. He mm -hmm. do some really dope videos. If you look at my videos, he did the majority of them. Okay. Um, I've seen the name. I gonna be shooting. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be shooting a video for that song probably, I would say, in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, matter of fact, it'd be good if you can come out and get a cameo or something, you know what I'm saying? Because we'll probably be shooting here and in Chicago. If you notice, i kind of been shooting the, oh, the recent videos here and in Chicago because I'm actually going to move back to Chicago. Oh, word? For real? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, should be back in, I should be back in Chicago permanently um, by the fall at the latest. All right, you know I'm September, already out there. September at the latest. Okay, okay. Um, so when 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 is the video? You said a couple weeks in, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
keep me posted, man, because I'm I'm here and there, obviously. And uh, you know, I I'm mostly out here, but yeah, man, that's you know it already, man. If the, the dates work up. You in the shot? Are you in the shot right now? I'm right outside. Yep, I'm right outside the city. Okay. Yeah. So okay. yeah, so it's nothing, man. It's nothing. Just jump on the e way. Um, All right. Yeah, nothing. So uh, let me ask you this. Um, you know, it, it's important that, and, and that's why I named the show The Business, right? So you know, I talk about the artistry behind it because I don't think a lot of cats really know that this is an art form. This is an art form. It, it's the 10,000 hours of practice that makes perfect. It, this is an art, this is a legitimate, legitimate art form. So I think people think, especially nowadays, oh, I'm just going to get in front of a mic and spit some shit. It's not, and you and and it's not that because everybody's rapping now, right? Everybody rhymes, and and to me, it's lost a lot of the it is it's lost a lot of the creativity and a lot of the mystique because every motherfucker Absolutely. out here's rhyming, right? Absolutely. Okay, so in order to stay ahead of the game, um, a lot of times you have to just keep updating your sound, and I know you know this because. You know, is, is you've been in the game for a while, um, mm -hmm. but what I like to talk about, like again, back to why I named the the, the the show, what I named it, is the business, man. So you talked about how you've been at it for so long. What are some of the like the key things that you've picked up business wise? How you, maybe how you promote yourself now, or um, you know uh, what you do now in in the form of like uh, how you secure your music and make sure you know nobody can tamper with it, anything like that, because Remember, I was just talking to somebody back in the day. We did the poor man's copyright, right? But nowadays, <laughs> I do shit. You know, Melody. So, well, nowadays, yeah. you gotta do this shit a certain way. So there's just all this paperwork you gotta do before you drop some shit. And now, right. we, and it's kind of turned us into businessmen. So talk about your transition on how you just went from an artist to now a businessman slash artist, because it's that's what it is now, right? Um, if, if, if I'm being honest, that's something that I'm still learning. Okay. Um, because it's, 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 as you said, I was used to ASCAP, BMI, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, poor man's copy, you yeah. know, stuff like that, where now there's so many different things you have to do from putting your music on YouTube to putting your music, you know, streaming your music and stuff. There's so many different avenues. So. I mean, the main thing I would try to tell any upcoming artists is the same thing I'm doing right now is really research. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Get your paperwork in order. The music is always gonna be there. Yeah. Um, but the paperwork is so much essential now. You know what I'm saying? Than it was when I first started out, yeah. where you could depend on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? To be able to handle that for you. Yeah. Now. You, you become so much more in control of your music in your career because you don't need all those extra people no more. No. You don't need to deal with a distribution label. You don't need to deal with a management company. But if you are still a person such as myself who is still out here working, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and take it, then you need to incorporate some people in your circle yeah. that's going to make it 100% they focus to, to, to handle that business for you. Yeah. Otherwise, you wasting your time. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, yeah. you wasting your time. You can let time pass you by. Oh man, I got dope shit. I feel like I done had dope shit for a long time. Has mm -hmm. it profited my life the way I would like it to? No. Mm -hmm. Then you got these whack motherfuckers out here who these niggas all on the screen flashing yeah. their money, they boats and shit, and you know I don't envy nobody. But I'm like, God damn, what? Right. The fuck do I gotta do? Right. They just on top of their whole little streaming and. You know, getting their paperwork together. Mm -hmm. So, if you can, if you can be on top of the paperwork and be on top of handling your business and be a dope artist, mm -hmm. I feel like you control the game. Because, in my opinion, there's not very many people out there like that. I don't fuck with a lot of these new people at all. If I'm being honest, I I like Lil Baby. Mm -hmm. um, J Cole is my man. Yeah. Um, and I'll pretty much stop right there. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. pretty much stop right there. I don't be the Migos and all that shit. I'm not. It's just not. Yeah. I just can't. I just can't relate. Yeah. Um, 
but I would I would definitely say if you if you are, if you are dope and this is something that I'm I'm trying to still because my son is actually getting into music right now, which is 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 a proud moment for me yeah. because I don't know if you've seen any of it. Probably if you go back and you look, maybe the last three or four videos of me has been me with my son. Mm, okay, he's kinda got that. He's kind of got that. Whatever you want to call it that they have. Mm, but he's fun. been watching me his whole life. Mm. So he's kind of, you know, he got his metaphors and his shit together too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just trying to get him to get on the right page of getting his business and shit in order and keeping his creative juices flowing. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you gotta, you gotta have both to be a standout because you want to capture not only your generation, but you want to capture my generation too, because there's still some old heads that listen to hip hop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Can definitely. you think about how far advanced you would be if you had our attention as well as y'all attention? That's yeah. what you want to focus on. Don't just, yeah, you can get rich and get the money off, but it's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. So yeah. Yeah. which one do you want to be? Yeah, true indeed. True indeed. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's great, man, that you. You know, he he following in his pop's footsteps. You know, you know what I'm saying. I, I, um, I, my daughter, my oldest, she uh, she expressed to me like a year or so ago that she wanted to start making beats. So I want to encourage that. You know what I mean? That's dope. Yeah, yeah. I want to encourage that man because again, she's she's seen me and she's seen uh, yeah. And, and I try to tell her like, look, you know, she got it. She's getting her degree this year, which is great. And I'm like, look, if I had to advise somebody, I wouldn't advise you. I wouldn't advise anybody to go into music, man. It's this life is just for, you know, we we some stubborn heads, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause the the, the industry keeps slapping us around. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It'll show you no love. Like you could be high one minute, cold the next. So, like it, it's just one of them type things. You really have to love this shit to get into it. And so you know, I, I, it really hurts me in nowadays to see. And I, I, don't, I, I'm, I consider myself a purist, but I don't want to sound like the old oh, man. I get get off my lawn type nigga, you know. But I, I just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just disappoints yeah. me, man. What they doing with the game? It's really because um, there's like, unless you unless you want some fake shit, or they want to throw you in a dress, or do some fake, you know, some shit that's out your character. You know what I'm saying? It ain't. It, it's kind of like, and I've had. I just 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 did a radio interview. A uh, weekend uh, back, uh, past weekend, or whatever, and uh, not this past weekend, the weekend before, with this DJ out of New York, and um, you know he was just saying like he was featuring, you know, he featured some of my joints over there. We did a whole full blown interview. He was like, bro, you do realize that the shit you're doing is not like popular right now. Like you doing like hip hop shit, like and you're like you ain't doing all this like you mentioned before, like the Migos and all that type shit. I'm like, bro, it's intentional though. What I'm doing is the <laughs> you know right, 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 right. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to step into their lane. I'm trying to stay in my lane. There you go, and perfect what you're doing, and, and keep updating and reinventing what you're doing, because that's what that's what that, those are the principles we were brought up on in this game. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. So, um, you know, it's sink or swim with what you're doing, man. And, and um, I, like you said, you you're actually mentoring your son like that, teaching him the right principles in the game, then, you know, to me, it's like just paying it forward. And that's all I try to do now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just paying it forward. And I'm obviously, I'm still active, but, you know, for me, this shit never, it's about a legacy. I tell everybody, this shit is about legacy now, man. It's about legacy. Right. I mean, you know, what kind of legacy you want to leave? That's all. Um, but right. getting back to you, brother, um, like I said, man, I, I really appreciate your art. Um, I really appreciate you making the time and, you know, it's just looking back at your, and I didn't even know, I didn't know a lot of things that we dropped. I didn't know that your history as far as with uh, the zoo niggas and all that, like I didn't, I knew a little bit about it. Cause we got, you know, my, the big homie, uh, Cal Winfield, the big homie Jack, the man. Hey, it's not, hey, and I had to say that shout out, shout out to my boy Jack. Cause there, there, there is a real quick, there is a, 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 a part that, um, we didn't get to where, okay. you know, when I did, when I did move back to Kalamazoo mm. um, and, and I, I did develop the patience and stuff. 
there was a nice little stretch there where hip hop was so big and impactful in Kalamazoo at mm-hmm. that time when Club Soda was still popping. Oh, and you had yeah. Jack the Mac in Michigan. Mm-hmm. You had MED. You had Rumble House. You had Exile. Mm-hmm. Um, you had, uh, I was actually in a group back then. I had, you know, I did my own little solo stuff, but I created a, a group called the Platoon. Okay. Um, with Rip the Rebel and his young cat, Young Money. Um, mm-hmm. DJ Heavy Money was on the radio station. So you could go to these shows and you could watch all these different artists perform. Mm-hmm. And DJ Heavy Money had a spot on Wider 89.1 at night where you jump in the car and be riding. You're going to pull the little chick from the club or something. You ride next, you know, they playing your songs on the radio. It was a, it was, <laughs> it was a real place. good time for hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, once they once they shut um, club soda down, that that kind of just killed everything. You know what I'm saying? It was and it was a it was a small window, but I can't. While we talking about you know the growth and the history, you know I can't I can't leave that out. You know what I'm saying? From like 2004 to maybe like 2006, mm-hmm. it was just man, dog. It was popping. I mean, we was doing shows. I don't think I've ever done that many shows. I mean, at Pop Pete's, at Club Soda, mm-hmm. at um, I'm trying to think, uh, man, it was a couple more spots around here that they was just allowing us to do hip hop shows because we was going in there and doing the music, mm-hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't really no drama and shit popping off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People weren't going in there fighting, and these was real hip hop heads that was showing up mm-hmm. that that wanted to just see hip hop shows. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, black yeah. people, white people, everybody was just in there, just and it was a good time, man. And 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 it'd be nice to see, you know, the younger generation that's coming up get it back to that where they not in there and these niggas in there fighting and putting guns and all that bullshit. Wasn't none of that type of shit going on. No, nah, I wasn't. I know that that that, that era too because um, when we were doing the urbanized shit, it was the Lafayette Tap Room, it was the fucking State Theater. Um, like you said, club soda. Even we even did the warehouse. Like it, um, you know, Western. We it was just like you said. It was just a fruit. Just a just a time with what things was popping off. People were releasing shit. You had Latin Assassin on the radio as well. Yep, uh, yep, yep. And wider. You know what I'm saying? And 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 the whole scene was just like bubbling. You know, I remember that because I I actually left town in '06. I moved out here in '06. But right before that. I go to shows all the time. You never know who was, uh, you never know really who was who was gonna be on stage, who was gonna perform. Never knew. Um, never knew. Yeah. Ed Jean, Ed Jean, a pop up. Ed Jean, I remember Ed Jean had just put out that Fifth of Jan album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gang put out that album. I had just put out my first little solo album, As Patience, a Watch Pot Never Boils. Mm. Um, he, he, he was getting newspaper articles in the Gazette. You know what I'm saying? It was like you felt like. A celebrity around this yeah, motherfucker, yeah. dog. It was a good, yeah. it was a good time, man. Was, and I actually, yeah. I missed that shit. Like I said, it was different genres of music, and everybody was collaborating. I did shit with Rumble House. I did shit with Med. I did shit mm-hmm. with Michigan. Everybody was just fucking with each other. You know what right. I'm saying? But now, and even after that, it's like everybody is like that crabs in a bucket mentality. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody don't want to play. Everybody can't be the quarterback. Nah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. somebody. Get out there first. Say Lunatics is a good example. They was a group, mm-hmm. but Nelly had the look. Nelly had whatever. So they did. If he got to get out there first and bring y'all along, then let that happen. Don't hate on the man. Nah, him. man. This nigga, this nigga trying to be on before us. And ooh, no, that's not on him that they picked him over the rest of y'all. Right. Just fall that, in line, dog. Play your position. You will get your turn. You will get your shot. That's the main. Yo, that is the main downfall of artists. Like coming out that that were coming out of the zoo since the, since the beginning of time I can remember right Absolutely. everybody Absolutely. I see you at a party first thing we're gonna do if I see you at a party bro I love your shit is jamming we need to do something right and then right. two three weeks later it's forgotten about nobody wanted to collab yep. everybody wanted to be the the headliner and I think at the same time it brought the whole scene down and like you said when they start shutting down like uh bells like for performing places like bells and uh, 
you know, you named this. Another one I just saw the Blue Dolphin. Y'all probably Blue performed Dolphin. that Blue Dolphin. Blue they was Dolphin. good about yeah. that people yeah. perform, yeah. yeah. Man, there was so many. We had at least, I can, like, we named at least eight spots, right? Eight to nine <laughs> right. spots that was, that was jumping at the time. And any given, right. you know, on a Friday or Saturday night, even Sunday, it was you can go. We, I talk about this all the time with my guys, man. It's, and, and, and for that period of time, I talk about just the talent in that area by itself. Um, you know, something should have popped off to where we had a funnel. Like you talk about the St. Lunatics. Because when one person gets on, on, and they put everybody else on. So, you you know, right. Wu-Tang is another great example. You know, Meth had to right. look first, right? And then everybody right. else started trickling out. Then we do a group album. Everybody else trick. And it, there's a process. There's a there's a method, method behind that madness. But I we right. never, and I, one, one other thing I want to mention, and you, I don't know if you can relate to this, but and we don't really support our own. Like, the South had a scene because they supported their own. West Coast jumped off because they supported their own. East Coast obviously originated out there. But Midwest never was able to, we did have an Eminem, we have a Common, we have a Twister, we have a, a Royce. But it was never this cohesive uh, thought out process where Midwest artists would get out there and have a foundation. I don't know what right, you think no, about I'm that. With you. You know. No, I'm with you. And, and by the way, I like the people you selected. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was a good selection of people to mention, but um, no, I'm I'm totally I am totally on board with you with that. I think that um, this area, especially even Kalamazoo, man, Kalamazoo is a very talented spot. Mm -hmm. It ain't just music; it's, it's sports and shit too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. We produce yeah. the Derek Jeters and the Greg Jennings, and we that's from here. You right. know what I'm saying? And I ain't even from here. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm from Chicago. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of talent here, and no. It's never been that support system that I feel is needed to catapult people into where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely, I, I definitely agree with you, man. I mm -hmm. do. I think if we had more of a Midwest movement, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to these little scattered people, you know what I'm saying? They got a couple connections and shit here and there, but they not really reaching out to anybody, you know, this person right. get on a little bit. And so he kind of, mm, well, yeah. you know, and I, I, I've, 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 I've sat back and watched that shit my whole career being here. Um, but I definitely think we, as a, as a community, mm -hmm. we, as a, um, a area, we sold ourselves short because yeah. we did not have that same support that you're talking about with the South and the East and the West where, hey, G Smooth, dog, he popping right now, man. Let's all get behind him and yeah. push him. Air, G, Air G, he popping right now. Let's all, people would rather, hey, oh, Air G was on 106 and Park, man. He think he the shit, man. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, dog, no, he don't. Let's support that shit. Right, support that, exactly. Support your own. And one other, one other common thread is, look, some people I named, they had to leave. You know, Eminem had to leave to go to the West Coast. Com yeah. had to go, you know, East Coast. And, and these people had to actually leave because they felt that as this probably the same thing that they didn't feel like they were supported strong, strong enough, you know, and they had to. And, and it's ironic. I know you've been to different towns and different cities. I get more love out of town than I ever did back in back in the zoo. You know, so I got love. I, I get love on the East Coast. I get love on the West Coast. I look at my sales, my data sheets and all that. I get more love overseas. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> then you do it. You, then then you, you do and them it. overseas people, them overseas people love you, man. I had mm. a cat hit me up from Japan mm. uh, looking for the Zume album. This was mm. probably two, three years ago. I don't mm. have any access to that album anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm like, uh, I ain't got the, uh, I don't have any access to that. I got this new. You know, virtual album. No, 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 no. I want yeah. the Zoom album. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. just to show, like, and I, we talking about music, in my opinion, that's way better than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. on the same token, that's somebody overseas that's willing to pay for the shit right. that I couldn't, I couldn't, I could roll up on somebody right now, bro. I could leave my apartment right now mm -hmm. and go to the store and pull out my CD and be like, shit, dog, huh, man, give me $5. They be like, oh man, shit, dog. I ain't even got it, dog. Like, what, nigga? There you Is go. You for real, dog. Right. <laughs> Are you serious right, right now? Right. 
Then they go ahead and buy that pack of smoke. And he at the liquor store, but he at the liquor store going to go buy something to drink. And it's like, bro, this shit right here, what's right here is going to help you better than that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. So, that that's the fucked oh. up. That's fucked up. That's a fucked up man. I, again, I I can relate. That's the fucked up part of the whole the whole situation, man. Nobody and I and I got a line in one of my joints that said, "Just because they grew up with you, you never be their favorite." You know, because that familiarity breeds contempt. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It comes yep. back to the same thing. Like, oh, I know that cat. I knew I grew up with that nigga. Like, blah blah blah. But then you go out and buy a uh, little baby, and then you go out and go support uh, Wayne or somebody like that, and you know. Love to them, but again, you know, it's one of them type things. You won't support your own. And what they don't know is that when you support your own, we can give back to the community. We can do things for the community. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's a crab in the barrel mentality, man. And it's sad. Yep. It's only amongst our people though, but we ain't gonna, that's some deep shit, but we, you know, we ain't gonna really, <laughs> we ain't gonna get a little, <laughs> you know, yeah, we know what that is. You know, what, know that what that is. is. You know what that yeah. is, man. So look, before we close out, bro, I really want to, let people know where they can get your music at. You know, go ahead and, and, and throw your links out, whatever you promote, promote it, because everybody that watch this, man, they're going to want to jump aboard. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, and yeah, for sure. Going. I mean, right now, I mean, I got music on YouTube. You just go to Patience uh, Kezu, uh, go into YouTube and type it in, subscribe to my channel. Mm -hmm. um, my uh, Instagram page, I don't have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, but my Instagram page is Patience Picasso. Mm -hmm. um, I typically put videos and stuff up on there with the links to the videos and stuff. So um, I've been working with some younger artists, uh, Mook Thuggin, uh, okay. look out for Mook Thuggin. That's my, that's my nephew. You know what okay. I'm saying? And then my son, Jay Will, you know, I'm very supportive of them. You know what I'm saying? I ask anybody to just support them as well. Um, yeah. I still, you know, fucks with you, you know, Jack the Mac, Ed Jen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I mean, look, 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 look for some upcoming stuff. Like I said, I plan on shooting a couple of videos to uh, um, the Writer's Block album. Okay. Um, it's, it's it's a really heartfelt album. I'm going to just take my time and kind of just slow roast it. You know what I'm saying? I've noticed in the past, you know, not only with myself, people tend to just keep putting out music, putting out music, putting out music. Mm -hmm. But you sit on music that a lot of people haven't heard. You know what I'm saying? And the visuals, you know, kind of pull people in you know, more so to the music. So, you know, I'm going to just take my time and potentially maybe even shoot a video for every song on this album because I feel it has the potential to do that. Yeah. Um, right now, you can get the song um, What's the Deal? It could be this streaming on all networks. Um, I got the video out right now. I heard that. Um, it's joint hard. I like that. Yeah, 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 I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, but, yeah, the next video I think I'll shoot is... Um, past life um i got a couple videos right now with my son pride um uh I'm trying to think of what else uh never let up you know what i'm saying and you know a lot of these songs you could really just go in and go into youtube and just type them in mm -hmm. um it may be on my son's page jay will uh if not just go into um youtube and type them in and you know show some support man you know what i'm saying this uh get some substance in your life <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. There you go, man. Well, I appreciate you joining us today, bro. You know, we uh, we got a chance to chop it up for a while. Obviously, we're gonna chop it up some more behind the scenes. But um, sure. again, I appreciate you joining us. My my guest today has been Patience Picasso. Uh, this has been the Business 2.0. I'm Jay Irv. We see you next time. Salute. All right, bless hey, up, Jay. bro. Thanks for checking out that last video, and also we hope you're enjoying the site. Join the CTMG family, head over to charlesandtrimble.com. Also, you can check us out at charlesandtrimble.bandcamp.com. That's charlesandtrimble.bandcamp.com. Over there, you find the latest info and updates on artists, bios, and also purchase the new drip. We appreciate you guys checking us out. We'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>